Here's Todd Friel to explain that he thinks everything would be random without a god for some reason. I'm really simple. So as an engineer, a numbers guy, tell me, why do math equations always come up with a consistent answer? Because they're always constant in this universe. There are, they, that's right, there's constants. But how, what makes them constant? Why would they need to be made constant? If the laws of physics and math were changing all the time, one could sensibly ask what is causing these changes, but that isn't occurring. I can understand why you would ask what causes an occurrence, but why would the lack of an occurrence necessarily have a cause? Does something need to cause your god to not change? If not, why would anything need to cause the laws of the universe to not change? Uh, laws of physics and math. Laws of physics, all right. But who wrote those laws? This is a pretty goofy but very common equivocation that I hear from apologists. They think that because the descriptions of the regularities we notice in the universe are called laws, they must be some kind of behest that the universe is obeying. As Bertrand Russell pointed out, they are not behests. They are merely descriptions of constants, and as I said, I don't see why a constant, a lack of change, would necessarily have a cause. Man did. We think that we identified the correct formula, we experimented enough times and we concluded that's the law. Fair enough, but that still doesn't tell me why we have consistent outcomes. Why would consistency need an explanation? If the outcomes changed all the time, I would wonder what accounts for those changes, but if changes are not occurring, then what is there to account for? Here's my premise, that if there is not a bigger constant in the universe, there's no constants in math or in science. Because if we are random, nothing, you know, we kind of came together over billions of years and sort of got our act together and became moral, started walking upright, developed eyes, nose, ears, mouth, taste, all of that, we kind of evolved that way. There, 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 there wouldn't be any constants. We would never have anything that was certain, because it's all random, according to evolution. Fair enough? No, evolution does not say that it's all random. Mutation is often called random, but that's not really true. Really, the variables that contribute to how and when a mutation occurs are so complex that for most practical purposes, they might as well be random. But the process of mutation operates according to the same laws and constants everything else does. Even if mutation were random, evolution wouldn't be. Evolution takes mutations and sorts them, like a filter sorts particles from water. Fair enough. Do you believe in evolution? I believe in microevolution. Microevolution. What's the difference between micro and macro? Macro is that we are our descendants essentially from fish, and we actually grew uh, the fish grew legs. Then we evolved into humans. Okay. Microevolution is that depending on where we lived, such as uh, different climates, we adapted, we changed mm -hmm. because uh, hundreds of thousands of years ago, we did not know how to actually process meat. Therefore, our digestive system was different. Our teeth were actually different. But as we learned to actually cook our meat and evolve and adapt, our very teeth changed, our digestive system changed because we did not need that powerful bacteria anymore. And why did we decide to do all of those things? And what was the mechanism that kicked that process and guided that process so we could grow teeth, have a digestive system, develop something called peristalsis, which is what moves the food down to your gut, mm. the acid to deteriorate it, the ability to pull out the vitamins that you need, plus process it through a plumbing system. Mm -hmm. when, when did all of those things take place? And who decided that's the way we should be? Why would anyone need to decide that's the way we should be? The mere fact that that's how we ended up does not in any way imply that we should be that way, let alone that anyone decided it. Well, somewhere along the line, the coding in our DNA changed. The code in our DNA changed. All right. Codes in DNA... Um, can be manipulated these days and changed, mm -hmm. and di different people have DNA, but no new information gets added to DNA. You can detract information, mm -hmm. but you can't add information to DNA. Oh, this moldy old chestnut. Information can, in fact, be added to DNA. It's a two-step process. A mutation can sometimes result in a gene being doubled in a genome. A gene that only appeared once, then appears twice. Now, doubling information isn't really adding information, but that's where the second step comes in. One of the two copies of that gene can mutate into a brand new gene. This is a gene that is additional to the genes that existed in the genome just a few generations prior, and it's a gene that is distinct from the other genes. This is new information. See, what I'm trying to get at is, there, 
it's a little suspicious that all of these things happened all by themselves without anything to guide them or to think them through. Why? It would only be suspicious if you assume that the default state of reality is chaos, and the only way order can exist is if some conscious mind forces that order upon the universe. Why would that be the case? Why must this be assumed? Okay, so for instance, let's say you had your teeth, mm -hmm. you had your throat, you've evolved all of that, you've got peristalsis working its way down, but you haven't evolved your stomach yet. What would happen to your teeth and to your throat? That's not how the digestive system evolved. Your teeth and throat are useless without a stomach, but throats and teeth didn't evolve first. Stomachs and esophagi evolved at the same time, and teeth came later. I, I, would, not, I would not know. They'd, they'd go away because you don't need them for anything. You had to happen all at the same time. It's called irreducible complexity. You're so complex that if we, we reduced a component of it, none of the other components would exist because they need each other to function. No, they didn't. A stomach does not need teeth to function. But even in cases where things are irreducibly complex, if you take a part away, they can't do what they currently do, but they can still perform some other advantageous function. All right, I want to ask you a question about DNA. Okay. How many cells do you have in your body? Uh, too, uh, too many to count. About 50 million. Yeah. Give or take. Yeah, give or take a few trillion. Yes. 50 million cells. How many strands of DNA do you have? Uh, that I do not know. Let me put it to you this way. If we took out your DNA, first of all, we could fit it into a tablespoon. Mm -hmm. But if we typed out the code, we wrote it down, yeah. you could fill the Grand Canyon with your DNA information 40 times. Mm -hmm. Put it another way. We typed out your DNA and we took that and we tried to get it to the moon. Would it reach the moon? I would say yes. Five million times it would. Yeah. That is a lot of organized information. It's too complex mm -hmm. to have happened all by itself. Why? Why can't complexity happen by itself? I don't see why order needs to be accounted for. And when you have a lot of atoms all acting according to that order, it seems inevitable to me that complex order would come out of that. Just like the sunglasses you're wearing, you don't believe that those just happen. They evolved kind of a nose thing and then they got darker and then there's a sun. You go, that's not really logical. It's not logical given that sunglasses don't reproduce or mutate. If they did, it would be entirely logical to infer that they evolved. And I don't think it's logical to suggest that we happened all by ourselves. I think somebody made you. That's what I think. Why doesn't this same logic apply to a god? Is Yahweh not complex? If complexity can't just exist on its own, then how can a complex god exist on its own? If a complex god can exist on its own, why can't a complex universe with complex creatures in it exist on their own? I think you're designed by your maker, a very intelligent, powerful being who's very moral because we see another set of constants in this universe, morality. How do you measure those constants? What experiments can you do to demonstrate them? I asked a young man earlier, would you be willing to tell me it's always wrong to beat up a small child? No. Yes. Why? Because uh, children, for the most part, are innocent. All right, but what if I said, I don't think they are. I like beating up small children. I think it's good to beat up small children. How can you tell me I'm wrong? I wouldn't tell you you were wrong. If you have kids, I would just get in touch with CPS. Well, uh, by standards that have been set forth by religion for centuries, that is immoral. Well, that, that could be that religion has kind of written some of those things down. But if there is not a moral constant behind them, then it's just one set of people telling another people what to think. Yes. Right? Yes. So I think the moral constant in this universe is God himself. Mm -hmm. That's why we know that it is wrong to beat up small children, to punch somebody in the face. We know that's wrong, but the reason we even know about the concepts of right or wrong is because God is the standard of right and wrong. Then how is it that cultures that don't have and have never had any concept of a god still have ethical standards? 